Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my session. And it's really my honor to speak here. And my topic today is a statistical computation framework for generalized tensor estimation. And this is a joint work with my PhD student, Ren Gang Han, and my former colleague, Becca Willett. And tensor of, is the topic for today. And you can think of the tensor as array with multiple directions. And usually we we'll refer to all the one tensor as a vector, or the two tensor as a matrix, and all the three or even higher order tensors will be the focus for today. And throughout this talk, we we'll use the cartographic letter, just like this A, to denote the, the tensors. And this A here is all the D tensor because it has D ways. Why we care about tensors, the tensor problems actually appears in a lot of scientific research. For example, in order to investigate the nanometer structure of materials, uh, such as the protein or the tissues, um, the scientists come up with different sides of the sort of the electron microscope technology, like this 4D stem technology. And this picture illustrates uh, the mechanism of this 4D stem technology. On one side of the material, we put uh, a probe to emit electrons penetrate this material. On the other side, we put a 2D camera to receive the electron signals. And because for each opposition of the probe, we can generate a, a 2D picture, and the probe can move in two ways. So in the end, we have a, a 4D image. So that's why it's named a, a 4D step. The tensor type of data set also naturally appears in other scientific research problems like brain imaging analysis and the microbiome studies. In addition to that, in many scientific problems, although the data set themselves are not tensors, but by transforming the data into a tensor format, things can become easier. And here we give two examples, a high order interaction pursuit and the estimation of the mixture model via the moment tensor. In addition to that, I personally feel that uh, high order is more charming than just take a look at these two babies. I think these 3D babies look cuter than the 2D one, although I could be really biased in this because this 3D baby is actually my son. I was thinking he's cute no matter what. But please don't get fooled by their cute appearances. Uh, I've learned my lesson especially during this pandemic season. High order tensor, just like the high order baby, is much harder to handle than the matrices. And the tensor problems are far more than extension for matrices for many reasons. And first of all, the tensor has uh, multi-way structures. If we just ignore this structure and treat the tensor as a matrix, and uh, sometimes an open, it will lead to the suboptimal results. And secondly, the a high order tensors often come with the high dimensionality and they cause a lot of computational issues. And finally, uh, um, many say well defined, uh, well established result and the concept for matrices, such as the SVD, is a spectral norm, nuclear norm, uh, either not well defined or can be hard to evaluate in general for tensors. And in the literature, there are a variety of tensor problems, like the tensor SVD or denoising, tensor completion also the missing value imputation. Those are the unsupervised problem, learning problems for tensors. And also the tensor regression, which is a supervised problem. And for each of the topic, uh, there are quite a few say, efforts on them. And today I would like to provide a, a theoretical computational guideline for all of them by introducing a general framework of the learning tensor estimation. And here is our framework. And suppose we observe a data set D, which is drawn from some distribution parameterized by the Lorentz tensor X star. And our target is to recover this X star based on the data D. The, aim, the, the method is to minimize some loss function L under some sort of Lorentz constraint of X. And this is a general framework that covers the examples that we have mentioned earlier. For example, in the tensor SVD or denoising, 
And imagine this Y tensor is the Fourier stem image, so we can arbitrarily observe, and the X star is the true underlying image that we are interested in, and Z is the noise, which is different between these two. And in this example, the tensor data is D is Y, and the, the, the loss function, we can just set it as the negative log likelihood, which is the forbiddenness norm between the X, Y difference. And in some of the applications, observations are counts. And in that way, the Poisson or negative dy binomial may be a better way to model. And then we can think of the, the generalized tensor as VD or denoising model like this. And suppose each entry of Y satisfy a parametric distribution. Well, the parameter X is the interest that we want to estimate. And uh, then in this case, the data we observe is Y and uh, we can just let the loss to be the negative or say log likelihood function of the observation. A similar story also applies to the noisy tensor completion or the missing data imputation. And suppose we observe Y, but only in a limited number of entries of the tensor. And then we can write down the data set in this way and the log likelihood function in this way. And tensor regression, a similar story also applies. Um, in addition to the example we have mentioned, this framework actually covers uh, the following list of the applications of interest. And I also want to say that uh, this framework itself without a probabilistic model is interesting and in some say IMS or deterministic setting. Okay, so how to approach this general problem, this, this type of problems. A very natural idea is to consider to, is this rank minimization? And suppose the loss function we have is here, we penalize a, a rank function and try to minimize the overall, like the, 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 this overall function. And here, before we further proceed, we need to specify what does it really mean by a rank of X. Unlike for matrices, there's no uniform definition for low rank tensors. And uh, we want to specifically use this Tucker rank in the literature. And suppose we have a tensor X, and it, suppose it can be decomposed into the product of a quarter tensor S times the three loadings, U1, U2, and U3, along these three directions. Then the minimum number of core we can achieve to make this equation even is called a Tucker decomposition and the corresponding dimension of this S, R1, R2, R3 are the Tucker rank of S. And here is the Tucker decomposition. You can think of this as a generalization of the matrix SVD because you can see the similarity of these two formulas. Okay, so it's natural because of this setting, it's natural to constrain to consider this rank constraint optimization. Unfortunately, this rank constraint optimization is highly non convex because the, the low rank tensor is itself is a highly non convex set. And before we talk about the, our, our procedure for this and this go back and reduce the tensor to matrix and see what happens there. And if we want to, if this X is a low rank matrix and during the past decades, this problem has been widely studied and extensively studied. The traditional method is to put the nuclear norm to regularize in this way. Unfortunately, this idea does not really apply to tensor estimation. Although we can define the tensor nuclear norm and the tensor spectral norm just similarly to the matrix, the nuclear norm and the spectral norm. However, the tensor nuclear norm relaxation, this, pro this programming is a bit hard to even approximate indicated by the previous uh, seminar work. Then instead of this idea, we want to develop a framework for the generalized tensor estimation by considering the following non-convex formulation. 
And specifically, we plug in this X hat uh, by S times U1 times U2 times U3, and here are the core tensor times three loadings. And uh, we want to minimize this function with the following regularizers. And here, A and B are tuning parameters to be decided later. And these regularizers, U, will help keep, this regularizer will help keep U from being singular and guarantee that our procedure will work better. And also by some algebraic calculation, we can check the, um, by adding this regularizer, we will not change the optimization solution of this problem. Okay, so how to solve this problem? We can apply the gradient descent directly on this formulation. And to be specifically, if we have a initialization, which we'll illustrate later, now we can select the good tuning parameter A and B and step size eta. Then we run gradient descent simultaneously on U1, U2, U3, and S. And after sufficient number of iterations or until convergence, we can achieve the final estimator in this way. Well, how well does this algorithm work? And let's define some key quantity before moving to the formal theorem. Um, this is the C, which is defined as the gradient of L evaluated at the true parameter x star, and the, with uh, and the inner taking the inner product with the low rank tensor T. And this C will measures how different this true parameter x star is far from being a stationary point of this L. You can imagine if there's no noise, but everything is observed clearly, we should expect that the gradient of L x star is zero because the L x star should be the minimizer of the loss function, right? But when there is noise, then maybe this gradient is not zero, and this C will be greater than zero and uh, it quantifies the noise level. Okay, then this is the theoretical result. And suppose that our L function satisfies some regularity condition, we call it the RCG condition, and uh, the initialization condition and the SNR conditions are first satisfied. Then by choosing appropriate tuning parameter A and B and the step size eta, then we have the following deterministic error contraction rate for our estimator. And furthermore, we can show that after at the most logarithmic number of the reiterations, we can prove the estimator satisfy this upper bound. And this is fully characterized by the C square we have described earlier. Okay, with this deterministic result, we can apply it to the uh, statistical setting we have mentioned just slightly earlier. Uh, we consider the sub-Gaussian denoising with this additive model y equals to x star plus z, and z here are ID, they mean zero sub-Gaussian with uh, the following condition satisfied. And we, we want to, in this model, we can initialize y this high order SVD, HOSVD, which can be seen as the extension from the matrix SVD for tensors. And after that, we apply the gradient descent on the following loss function. And then here we have a theoretical guarantee. As long as the signal to noise ratio is greater than this value, then with probability as this value, the gradient descent satisfies the following estimation error upper bound. And actually this result will match the information theoretical result appearing in the previous literature. And in the tensor regression example, and uh, we can apply H of this video again on the covariance tensor between the response yi and the tensor covariance ai. And uh, then we apply the gradient descent on the following loss function. And then we have the following theoretical guarantee with a mild condition. And again, this upper bound can match the information theoretical lower bound in the previous literature. Uh, in this table, we briefly compare our method with the one in the previous literature. And we can see that our algorithm achieves say, a tractable say, theoretical guarantee and the small sample complexity estimation error 
And also, you can achieve exact recovery when there is no noise. And finally, let's move back to the 40 stand image denoising example we have mentioned at the beginning of this talk. And generally speaking, the 40 stem images are order four tensors, and they are photon limited, in the sense that uh, the images contains a lot of small counts or even zero counts. So the tensor data are highly noisy. But on the other hand, this tensor data will have a clear tensor structure because of the physical reasons. Um, and this image is illustrated the results. The first row corresponds to the true image of the atomic structure. And the second row is the photon limited images that we can observe. We can apply the matrix denoising method one by one on these matrix images and obtain this result. We can also stack all these images together into a one overall tensor and apply the proposed procedure using the Poisson negative log likelihood. And we can clearly see it actually gains a much better result. And finally, let's have a quick summary of this talk today. And in this talk, we propose a general framework for the generalized low rank tensor estimation to achieve say, tractable optimization performance and also minimize optimal statistical performance. And it has many applications and it can cover many real data examples. And in addition to the talk low rank, which is the focus today, we think this idea can be generalized to other structures such as the CP low rank or say the low rank matrices or low rank with symmetric loading structures. So that's all I want to for, say for today. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to take any questions you do have.